Today on Junior Realidad, I'm going to be talking about this little square circuit board that completely blew my mind. And I guarantee if you're into power electronics, this will be a little treasure chest of information for you. This square circuit board measures at about 5 inches and looks fairly simple. But this board is deceptively simple and complicated all at the same time. But we're taking a little bit of a look at the circuit board. Leave a comment below to see if you can guess what this circuit board might have come from. I'll be telling you in a little bit. This circuit board actually came from an MRI machine and this is an ingenious piece of hardware engineering. Let's get into how the circuit board works. Let's take a look at the other side of the board here. This side is a common ground plane, and this common ground plane is shared uh, throughout this surface. But you can also see the connection for the ground plane on this side of the board here. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that each one of these wires are actually tied together. I'll get you a closer view of that. You'll notice that the ground plane connects to every single one of these pins which means that this whole pin header here is actually the ground plane for this circuit board. Flip this over here now. Okay, so on the opposite side of this circuit board, let's say we have the MOSFETs here. We have uh, the gate and we have the drain and we have the source. Now the source is connected to the ground plane through this right here and the ground plane is what provides power to the MOSFETs through this circuit. Let's take a look at where the power goes. So through this connection here, it rides underneath each MOSFET and it connects to the pin header up on the top side here. Let's take a look at this pin header. You'll notice that this pin header is also connected to the side of the board which is the MOSFETs drain. So all of the MOSFET drains are connected and they connect to this pin header here. So looking at this board, we have the ground, which is the MOSFET source. And we have the MOSFET drain. And these are our three MOSFETs on the board. So let's take a look at how these MOSFETs are controlled and driven. Okay, so if there are only two connections on the board physically, where do we get our drive signal for our MOSFET? And more importantly, where are we getting our power for our gate drive IC right there? I mean, to give you an idea of how much power uh, this board could require to run, that is a 12 amp gate drive IC. It's capable of 12 amps. So how is it getting driven? Well, here's the ingenious side of it. We have these two ferrite cores here, and these ferrite cores are remarkably just, I mean, they're, they're amazing ferrite cores. They can hold a nearly perfect square wave. I mean, it's just insane. Um, if you understand ferrites, that, I mean, that's insane. But these ferrite cores act like the secondary on a transformer. So, if you know about a CT loop for current measuring, um, with it, uh, alternating current, what they do is they will use cores similar to this, and they'll put the wire through the core to measure the alternating field. So, looking from the side, the conductor would go through these ferrite cores. When current is passed through the conductor here, a magnetic field will be generated. The ferrite material in these magnetic toroids here will induce an electrical current to these two coils, and these two coils are in parallel with one another. Between those two coils, there is a Zener diode, which clamps the current and voltage up to a certain point. So, here we have basically our power and signal input and they pretty much look to fire at the same time due to the fact that these are in parallel configuration. 
The majority of components on the rest of the board are actually for protection. So to continue on with the rest of the explanation, I am going to bring a board that's pretty much broken down. That way we can take a look at the simple circuit side of things. So before every vital protection component is stripped off, I've also stripped off the redundant MOSFETs as well. Whether they're redundant or not, not quite sure, but they're definitely important. And here is the basis of how the entire board works in principle. Alright, looking at the board, we can now note the principles of the circuit. The rings of ferrite that act like the secondary on a transformer, when uh, they get charged, get that alternating signal, uh, they will get a electric current across those. And that electric current is then rectified by these two diode components here. Take a look at that. I've labeled those off. So the AC component from one of those toroids goes here. And the other toroid leg feeds over to this guy. And these are basically two diodes in a package. So you got the uh, the anode and then you got the where the anode and cathode meet and then you got the other cathode that leads to ground. And then you got here the same diode, which has the same markings, which again the cathode, and then the anode that you can see connects to the positive here and the positive here on those tantalum capacitors. So the AC gets rectified on here and here in the then they get smoothed by these components and uh, I've left this little capacitor on here as well. Let's get to the gate drive IC. So I have colored those pins of the gate drive IC and as I said I believe these are 12 amp gate drive ICs so they're pretty powerful. Uh, they are pulled down to ground. One of these uh, you got a pull down resistor that is uh, I think here to the ground plane and then you got the signal which comes off the positive leg of this diode here. So when uh, these guys get energized, they not only feed power to the gate drive IC, but they also trigger the positive signal to go through here, and that positive signal gets smoothed and then fed into the input. The gate drive IC has a couple of pins here on this IC. I have labeled, or colored this one red, and I've colored this one red, which are the positive inputs of the gate drive IC. And you've got the negative pins right here, which are the negative input in this case. And what this does is it takes a positive signal, and it amplifies that signal with a higher voltage and higher current. So the green pin in this case right here is the input, which you give a positive feed in, and this pin is left neg or this pin is left unconnected. These two pins right here uh, come off the gate drive IC, and they run up to these resistors right here. Uh, these resistors, I think, are about five ohms, six ohms a piece, and so the resistors get tied to the gate of the MOSFET here. As I said the source is tied to the ground plane of this board and the drain is underneath the MOSFET as you can see on uh, this side right here is underneath the MOSFET and is tied to this output array right here. So in principle as I said uh, once an AC field is across here then uh, everything will get energized and this will act like one gigantic switch essentially. So let's hook it up and see how that works. So I'm going to first start by soldering this wire to the ground side of the board on the bottom. So any ground connection will work. I think I'm going to choose this ground connection here. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm also going to need to put a load on the drain side, for which I have this fairly large motor. 
So I'm going to connect the negative side of that to the output of the board, which will be this plane on this side. So let's do that. Let's pick that one right here. This will work. Okay, so to the drain, to the ground, awesome. Now we are ready to hook this side up to positive and this up to negative. I have my little power supply here and I'm going to set my power supply for the eight and a half volts. That should run perfectly fine. Keep this motor here. And, uh, I'm going to hook this up here to my positive and because the MOSFET is also tied through resistor to ground it'll be pulled down so I don't have to worry about the motor kicking on hopefully so let's connect that up to my power supply and uh, eh, nothing happening that is how it should be right now Okay, now to test out the idea that AC power gets generated here. We need an AC power source, and I do have one here. And let's check the power on that. So, it says uh, 8 volts. We'll see what it comes to on the meter. And we have here two wires, and we get... 11.8 uh, volts AC. Cool. All right. So now we got our trigger voltage and uh, we got our supply voltage. So in theory, connecting these up should trigger that motor. Let's see. And it does. Check that out. Let's do that again. Isn't that cool? Well, let's hook up one of the full boards and see what happens. Here we have one of the full boards hooked up and I've also lifted up one leg of each of these toroidal cores. And I'm going to put the same AC signal into here. And we'll see if that motor does the exact same thing. And it should because as I said, uh, everything else, the other MOSFETs are in parallel and everything else is pretty much for protection. So let's check that out. And it works the exact same way. Now let's take a look at why these boards are in fact so mind-blowing. So these boards are over-engineered big time. Uh, they got all these redundant connectors for the input and output for the MOSFETs. These are 1600 volt capacitors a piece. All these TVS diodes are rated for really high currents and each one of the MOSFET gates are protected along with the gate drive IC that's also reverse protected. Another feature about these boards is that the header right here, which you'll notice is a male header and on the other side of the board is a female header in the exact same location. Well, each one of these boards connect together like this. Which being said, each of these boards connect in series and act as a switch that can be fired at the same time by passing the same pulse through the firing conductor that trigger each one of these ferrite cores. So now this whole unit is a single switch. Uh, let's take a look at one of these switches, uh, a single board's rated capability. Uh, these are 1600 volt capacitors and each one of these MOSFETs are rated for 1200 volts at 20 amps. Which means uh, that together they're 60 amps in total with 1200 volts. These two boards in series double the voltage which means now it's 2400 volts at 60 amps which is insane 
Now let's talk about the bigger numbers and I will list the majority of them on here on the screen. So as I said, each one of these boards is capable of 1200 volts at 60 amps. Now inside of this device there were four stacks. Each stack either had 100 boards or 25 boards. I can't remember exactly but I'll list those numbers up on here on the side as far as the power dissipation and handling. So each one of these stacks was fed a conduit and when the conduit received energy it would trigger all of the boards at the same time and this would make for a gigantic switch. The entire thing was also in an oil bath so each one of these stacks was in oil submerged in oil and was pulled out if I lift up one of these semiconductors you can see underneath some of the remaining oil on the bottom yeah so technically this whole assembly is one gigantic either pulse switch or continuous switch and of course with four um, it could have been four switches that fired for different sequential electric magnets inside of the MRI machine or for the magnetron or other microwave components not quite sure but I mean it's like the best of the best it is the most incredible assembly for power handling I've ever seen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.